Books are the foundation of any civilization. Every system, philosophy, and work of life known today rests on the shoulder of books. And there are books, like the ones that would be explored in this video, that have changed our perception of the world as we know it. These books, dating far back to the inception of time, have caused a paradigm shift in science, improved civilization, and given technology a more expansive ground to thrive. Join us as we explore five ancient books that have changed the course of history and allotted us a more precise understanding of the systems holding the balance of the world. Number five, Ars Notoria. Ancient wisdom is a part of the bedrock of any civilization. This is because for one to achieve a thorough understanding of the present world and have one's curiosity amply quenched, one must consider how the world began from the eyes of books written about it. That is why the first book we'll be looking at explicitly explains the form and pattern of the world and the life force that controlled the earth prior to its destruction. Ars Notoria is considered as one of the most mysterious and controversial books ever written. This ancient book is part of what has now come to be known as the Little Key of Solomon. The Little Key of Solomon is a compendium of ancient wisdom, which includes five very mysterious books, Ars Goetia, Ars Thurgia Goetia, Ars Paulina, Ars Almadel, and Ars Notoria. Although all of the books contained in the Little Key of Solomon are ancient and contain varying and important stories about the origin of the world and the relationship between divinity and humanity, we'll be considering the oldest of the five books in this video, Ars Notoria. History has it that Ars Notoria was alluded to for the first time by Michael Scott in 1236. The book features mystical as well as historical and occult content. Apart from holding keys to gaps in research and knowledge, the book is said to contain a sequence of prayers intended to give photographic or eidetic memory and instant literacy to the reader, in most cases the magician. These particular prayers are similar to the ones included in the Sworn Book of Honorus, a medieval book of spells and grimoire supposedly written by Honorus of Teva. The Sworn Book of Honorus is one of the oldest as well as most influential grimoires ever written. The grimoire covers a wide range of topics from astrology, history, and special spells to occult magic. Ars Notoria may be one of the oldest and most influential books in the Little Key, but it was completely ignored in the Little Key. During the first publication of the compendium by A. E. Waite in the 13th century, Ars Notoria was actually not included. However, when the essence of the book became known, it took its place as one of the most visual books in the Little Key of Solomon. The book was first published in three languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, and carries the force of a thousand grimoires. There's a popular misconception that Ars Notoria is a spell book filled with demonic magic and heresies, and while this may have traveled far and wide, it's actually not the case. Ars Notoria contains prayers, songs, histories, and essays that are aimed at training the senses of the magician. The book aims at giving the reader a more sharp and intellectual mind. It is said that King Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived according to the Old Testament of the Bible, got his wisdom from reading this book. The book prepares the mind of the magician to take on and prevail over any form of intellectual and societal problems. You become a compendium of wisdom not being able to forget whatever you lay your eyes on. While the book may sound desirable, there are some that have read the book and have fallen short of the supposed gifts contained therein. One of those victims, Joan of Marini, a monk who read the book and was plagued with demonic visions and haunted by visions of the past. To forestall this doom from befalling another curious reader, the monk wrote a book in the 14th century known as Libor Vicinum, where he admonished people to stay clear from Ars Notoria. Number four, the Book of Enoch. There are a whole lot of gaps in many stories that we have about the world and the formation of the universe. However, the Book of Enoch, also known as the Forbidden Book, answers many questions that we may have about the creation of the world, the formation of the universe, and the evolution of humankind. While this body of work may be considered a taboo, it still holds a considerable level of clues that pertain to the evolution of the human race. These books, as do other ancient books, negate certain scientific theories or postulations, one of which is the theory of evolution as propounded by Charles Darwin. 
The book gives a completely different story about how the human race as we know it now was born, claiming the presence of a superior alien species living and serving as guardians amongst men. The Book of Enoch is a part of the Scrolls from the Dead Sea, but because it contradicts most of the provisions contained in other books, it's regarded as apocryphal or even doubtful. One of the reasons the book's considered apocryphal is because it negates scientific theories and teaching from preachers over time. However, sources have it that the researchers that read and analyzed the book objectively concluded that it is part of the output material for the book of Genesis, but provides a more detailed description of how the world was before the big cataclysm. The book of Genesis records the presence of giants living amongst men, but did not give a detailed description of how the giants came to be. The forbidden books tell of the presence of extraordinary creatures with advanced technology sent to earth to watch over people. These aliens are now generally called angels. They stayed with humans and soon enough began to have sexual relationships with women. The aftermath of their relationship is what Genesis records as destructive and bloodthirsty giants known as the Nephilim. Humans were taught how to produce weapons, cosmetics, fire, and also to perform magic. However, the result of their new knowledge was self-destruction. The evidence described in the Book of Enoch was destroyed in the Big Cataclysm. Number 3. The Colbrin Bible The Colbrin Bible is one of the oldest books in history. This book is a 3,600-page manuscript that gives a contrary perspective pertaining to the Big Cataclysm with another prophecy that the end of the world would come by the hand of the same element. This element is recorded as the destroyer, and it would come again to finish what it started. The Colbrin Bible is also called the Colbrin Manuscript, or the Coil Book, and it contains 11 ancient texts. This book was found during a fire in the Glastonbury Abbey, but has its root in ancient Egyptian mythology. History has it that the first six parts of the book were written by Egyptian priests and contained teachings on cosmology, arithmetic, and astrology, amongst others. The book found its way into the hands of a Phoenician sailor who brought it to the territory of Celtic Druids, what is now known as England. The Colbrim Bible was found in the same place where the Holy Grail was said to be placed. After much editing and considering the worthiness of its content, the Bible would then be published in the 18th century under the name The Coil Book. The Colbrim Bible gives a striking description of events contained in the Old Testament and explicates the prophecy of the future of mankind continued in Revelation. The Colbrim Bible describes the great destruction, but detaches God from its affairs. Contrary to the opinions of the Bible, where water would be used to destroy the earth, the Colbrim Bible records an alien force as responsible to the great cataclysm. This force was described as the destroyer. The book also prophesies that the destroyer will come back to sweep whatever life would be left on earth. 110 generations must go on sunset. Kingdom will rise and fall. People will fly in the air like birds and will swim in the seas like fishes. Men will negotiate peace and that will be their days, days of hypocrisy and deception. Women will be like men, and men will be like women. People of the Magi will rise and fall, and their languages will be forgotten. The country of the lawmakers will rule the earth. They will conquer four quarter of the earth. They will conquer four quarters of the earth and will talk about peace, but will begin war. The nation of the seas will be bigger than any other, but will be like an apple with a rotten core and won't be long lasting. The merchant people will destroy those who do wonders. The strong ones will fight the weak ones, north will fight the south, east will fight the west, and the light will fight the darkness. People will be divided by races, and their children will not be unknown among them. Brother will fight brother, husband will fight his wife, fathers are not going to teach their sons no more, and sons will be cowards. Women will become equal to men, and will not be treated with respect. Problems will arise in people's hearts. They will search for something without knowing what they search. Insecurity and doubt will torture them. They will have huge wealth, but their spirit will be poor. Then there will be a shift in the movement of the earth and the sky, and there will be tremors. He will arrive unnoticed. People won't know. They will be deceived. The time of the destroyer is coming. The destroyer will come, and the mountains will be divided and will ignore fire and ash. Trees will be exterminated. Waters will devour the entire earth. 
and the sea will boil, the sky will burn bright and red, and the earth's color will resemble honey. Although elements of this prophecy are being experienced in different parts of the world, scholars neglect the provision and termed it mere literature. Number 2. The Book of Thought Egypt is considered the root of modern civilization. From archaeological findings and historical descriptions, there's a general consensus that the city was advanced in technology and learning. The Book of Thought stems from one of the most popular divinities in Egyptian mythology, that being Thought. Thought is regarded as the Egyptian god of wisdom, crafts, hieroglyphs, and science. His sacred animal, as all the Egyptian gods and goddesses have one, is the ibis or baboon. Hence, his image is drawn with an ibis or baboon as his head. Apart from limitless wisdom, Thought is also god of writing and is said to have given the Egyptians their hieroglyphs, an ancient writing system originating from Egypt. The Book of Thought is presumed to have been written by Thought himself, and the book is said to encompass patterns to ensure eternal power. There are different records as to the medium, though, which the book has handed down to humans. The first record holds that the book was written on papyrus, created by the hand of Thought himself. Another record holds that the book was written on 78 golden plates. The second record also tells that the authors of the book are the legendary Atlante, a civilization underwater. However, the book is said to contain a lot of esoteric practices and rituals that kept and flourished the civilization of both Egyptians and Atlantis. The Book of Thought does not only grant the reader eternal power, it's said to contain an avalanche of spells. One of the popular spells in the book is supposed to give the reader the ability to understand the language of animals. Another popular spell in the book is said to give the reader the ability to see the gods themselves. The Book of Thought is not just a grimoire with a plethora of spells that give magical power, but it also contains knowledge that form the root of modern-day fields like medicine, chemistry, the arts, philosophy, and magic. Legend has it that if a man succeeds in deciphering the secrets of the book, he will rule the entire world. Sadly, though, the book has been lost to history, and scientists even doubt that it ever existed in the first place. However, Egyptians believe that the book has been taken to the world above the human world, Astra where only those who have mastered the use of his consciousness can actually locate. Number 1. The Book of Giants Giants are mythological creatures that have been featured in a lot of stories that date back from the beginning of time. They're unusually tall and large creatures that feed on human flesh and are almost always ruthless. Different ancient texts have argued for and against their existence, leaving a loop in the argument. One of the books that explain the existence of giants is the Book of Giants itself. The Book of Giants is one of the most essential texts that explains the origin and civilization of gigantic creatures. The book is amongst the most contentious ancient texts ever found. Some researchers and explorers are of the view that the book is an offshoot of the Book of Enoch. The book records the liberal interactions between angels and people as documented in the Book of Genesis. It was the interaction between angels and women that gave rise to giants. The angels stayed and ruled over the earth for 120 years, according to the Bible. The Book of Giants records the feats of the giants and the havoc that they wreaked on humanity for thousands of years. Nephilim, or giants, are considered to be mythological creatures by scientists, but the Book of Giants provides a compelling argument and buttresses it with facts and proofs from the lives of the children of Shimahaza, Oya, and Haya. Published in six to seven languages, the Book of Giants provides ample understanding of what giants were and why they were exterminated from the face of the earth, and it was written first in the Syrian languages, Greek, and the Middle Persian versions. The Book of Giants contains how the giants were removed from earth because of their violent tempers. Although they sent words to Enoch for him to intercode to God on their behalf, the message fell off they were destroyed by God in the Great Cataclysm. Only Noah and his sons would be saved from the destruction. 